And at number one, let's hope we'll be around forever. The everlasting, eternal. In the 90s, Eternal were one of the biggest pop groups on the planet, trafficking over 10 million records around the globe and racking up 12 top 10 hits in the UK. It was a very exciting time. It was a whirlwind. We went from no one's to someone's in like five minutes. But behind the smash hits, Eternal were a diplomatic fiasco. It's not nice being. It's horrible. I don't think that their behaviour was kind. Looking back now, we had a love and hate relationship. I, I didn't want to be in a band where no one was friends, no one wanted to talk to each other. We never communicated. She didn't really want to be friends. It's like going through a divorce. It festered into something very ugly. Once you're divorced, sometimes you speak to your partner, sometimes you don't. <laughs> I was sacked by facts. There you go. Over 15 years after one of the most acrimonious splits in pop history, the Eternal Girls contemplate how reuniting face-to-face -face will affect their lives. And was able to put my past behind me because that was so painful at the time, leaving the group and all the press that was around that. What's scary about going back into the, in the industry and singing is having to be exposed, having my personal life out there. I'm just shocked that I've known you for so long and we never spoke about it. I haven't spoken to either of the girls in a, in a very, very long time. So I think it's going to be really weird. It's almost two against one, isn't it? Which probably makes it harder. There's bits that you enjoy in the business and bits that you don't enjoy. It would be different the second time round. I think we've all got a bit more patience, a bit more understanding as well, being older. But if I think too much about them, I might back out. <laughs> that, you know, when you're in a band and two of those members are sisters, it's always going to feel like they agree and maybe you don't. And that was a lot of the time how it was, you know. I know that there are some opinions being that maybe it was your fault yeah. or whoever. Are you not scared? Um, what people gonna think about you and... This is me, and that was my past. You know, people, yeah, may Google Eternal or my name and ask me lots of questions. And to be honest, I haven't prepared myself for that. I'd like some closure. I'd like to be able to look back on Eternal and smile like everybody else does. Today is D-Day. It's the day that we actually officially reunite. I'm about to go meet the rest of the girls, and I have to say I'm a little bit nervous, a bit anxious, um, but at the same time relieved, because at least we get to sort of sit down now. Will the girls be able to move forward and honestly face their past issues, or is catastrophe waiting around the corner? Getting to where we got to is totally understandable, but when we were in it, we couldn't understand what was going on. We weren't getting on, but that was a constant thing. And then you've got the... I mean, you will agree that you've said many times... Well, actually, I don't know if you will agree, because, obviously, we were being told, you want to leave, you want to leave. That was a constant thing that went through... Yeah. From, first album. from album two. You want to leave, you want to leave. And then The Greatest Hits was made. And then we were told you wanted to stay. It was really confusing time for us. But, you know, what's true, what's not true, is, I don't even know. So how do we get to sort of recording in different countries? Um, most of the time it's like, we was like told that maybe you didn't want to travel, Cal, or we didn't really know what was going on at the time, but our tickets were bought and Bernie and Esther, there you go. Why didn't you come? With us. I wasn't invited. <coughs> but you would have got the same schedule as us, though. You didn't get the schedule that said most Esther Kelly Burney. No, most of the time, in terms of recording, I was never Mastering. invited. You were never Especially told. Especially when you were doing all the LA trips and stuff like that. You weren't told. No. We really needed to pull together as a team. One of the things you did say was, you're only going to stay for the money. And that really went to my core. It was to be real. It was to try and be truthful and honest and tell you where I was at, which was that, for me, it was a job. I don't know if you just thought that would really get me, because it really did. At that time, it came what I used to call a clock-in, clock-out culture, because mm. it didn't feel we were together, unity. there was any unity, <coughs> there was any team, there was any 
yeah, we came to work. Mm. But I can see where we went wrong because we just weren't communicating. Yeah. But we didn't, at that time, we didn't see anything wrong. We're going, OK, let's we'll go our separate ways. If Kelly wants to leave, we're not recording anymore. This is becoming really difficult. I think the disappointment was that it was by fax. Mm. I was like, oh, just phone me mm. and say, Kels, this is really not working, is it? You know, can we just call it a day? Sending the fax was not our suggestion. We actually didn't even know. <clears throat> That's a bizarre way of communicating you're no longer in the band or we're going our separate ways. I don't know that had a massive impact for you. I know that we hadn't really spoken very much and that communication wasn't good, but that was a big... I, felt, I just felt like that's a big thing to say. So I thought, well, they don't like me. Yeah. They don't want me there anyway. Yeah, da, 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 da. So, <clears throat> OK, fine. It really wasn't about you asking you to go. Uh, and definitely we wouldn't have done it by fax. That was done by the solicitors. Uh, there would have been a better way to do that. But what we were trying to do is distance ourselves from management so we could get this album made. After Kelly received the facts of doom, the Eternal Sisters continued without her. She was down, but not quite out. So shortly after that, I was offered the solo deal, and I was like, oh, please, I'm not the best singer in the world. They were like, yeah, but he's willing to give you 1.2 million. I went, fine, let's do it. <laughs> so I was sat there with this record deal, thinking, the hell am I doing? They do realize I was the one that didn't do much singing. <laughs> it was fabulous. Triumph soon turned to despair, though. So I basically just woke up one morning with a, my hand in a claw and it wouldn't open. And then that progressed um, throughout my body till the point that I couldn't really walk or move myself. She was diagnosed with lupus, a disease affecting the immune system. I remember saying, oh, so what? Are we talking, like, you know, a week off or something? Because I'm in the middle of recording an album. And in the end, he just went, OK, you need to sit down. This disease means you could end up in a wheelchair. You need to take this seriously. And I was, I literally, for the first time, was like, oh my God. Um, I'm still not fully recovered. I have to take medication and I go to hospital quite a lot. But what left the bitterest taste was the lack of support she received from her former band members. No, no. No one got in touch with me, no. I, I found out that um, Kelly had lupus through the papers. It's such a shame, because it would have been nice to pick up the phone and, and talk to her. Yes, but it, the, the, the relationship now had passed that, unfortunately. In our lives, there were lots of things going on, and we never communicated. And that growing and growing and growing, it just it festered into something very ugly. It was our success <laughs> to enjoy. we didn't enjoy. We didn't enjoy it at all. Bizarre. No. Did you enjoy it, Cal? I think there were moments where I enjoyed it. The overall blanket was, no, I didn't yeah. have a good time, yeah. you know. And I remember watching other bands having a good time. It's difficult, because anyone watching us would have gone, brilliant band having a whale of a time wouldn't know anything that was going on i always perceived you as together tight locked you know when it came to decisions you were always on the same page and so it always seemed like this wall you know of sort of power mm. and and also because you're you were sisters mm. but not just because you're sisters because esther's is the lead vocalist and vernie does all the vocals after that mm. so it just seemed like this wall Good of front. strength and mm. and power at the end of the day, even if you yeah. fall out, it's not going to change the fact that you're sisters, exactly. you know? I can see how that's difficult as well, because our views are going to be the same. So yeah. it's not like we went, let's agree on this so that Kelly doesn't get a, a window in. Mm. And it's, so it's more difficult. in your face, obviously, after Louise leaves that, you know, well, now it's just mm. Esther oh, and Vernie against yeah. Kelly, as it were. If we were three individuals and not sisters mm. and we had the same view, I don't think... It's, I don't think you would have perceived that wall as much. When Eternal proved finite, Vernie swapped the long white coat for a short white wig and trained to become a barrister. This pop rompole is married to husband Brian and a full-time mum to two kids, Avery and Phoenix. What videos do you want to see of mummies? 
Can you, do you know any of our songs? What are you going to do? What are you going to do is the first one. Do you, do you know any of Mummy's songs? Which one? Ask me. Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> Say my name. Similar group. <laughs> Going back into the business will be a bit of a juggle for me and for the kids. They're used to having mummy at home, aren't they, really? But I think it's a good time for me because I've got a seven-year-old and my four-year-old has just started reception. So I'm at home going, hmm, what am I going to do? <laughs> so... <laughs> what are you doing, woman? Well, I'm just saying <laughs> there could the, be... There could number be four. A, number four. Right. right. I don't think Lou's up for doing it. I think she's been quite vocal about it, to be honest. I haven't heard from her in terms of how she... Yeah, her thoughts are how she feels. But we are sorry, and I know you know that. I know you know that. To be able to look both the girls in the eyes and hear how they felt, I know it sounds really cheesy, but it's really life-changing. Obviously, now we can look back and say sorry. And that's necessary to happen so we can move forward. Thank you. I really appreciate it. What a relief. Um, you've managed to all sit down and have a decent talk about the past and really understand each other a bit better. Um, and it was long overdue. Moving forward, how do we keep this? You know, this right here is, keep talking. is healthy. Yes. Yes. And I think the fans will really appreciate it, mm. being able to know yeah. what happened. It's like you said, we never ever said anything. And this was the great time for us actually to say something. Really surprising the outcome and how we just miscommunicated really. This is a big feat, <laughs> the three of us sitting here together doing this big reunion thing. This is massive in and of itself. Turn the back. <laughs>